the Heretic's Fork. The Heretic's Fork was a special torture device reserved for those who spoke out against the Catholic Church during the Medieval Ages. With two spiked ends, the device was attached to the victim's neck with a strap and positioned in a way that there was always contact with the skin. This made it almost impossible to move your head into any position of comfort. You had basically no way to rest your head without getting impaled as a result. The only way it was removed was after the wearer had spoken the words, I recant. The Collar Similar to the Heretic's Fork, this tool was meant to hold the neck in a single position. It was tightened just enough to be uncomfortable. The collar was lined with spikes making it very difficult to move even a tiny amount. The real torture came after days without being able to lie down, rest your head, eat, or swallow. The Judas Cradle in medieval times, the Judas Cradle was considered one of the most disturbing torture methods. You'd be placed into a waist harness detached by ropes, and then slowly lowered onto the pyramid-shaped seat with the pointy tip inserted into your anus or vagina. The downward pressure caused by the victim's body weight would cause the muscles around the orifice to eventually tear, thereby impaling the victim. Rat Torture Rat torture was popular in both medieval Germany and ancient China. This method consisted of a pot of hungry rats that would be placed against the belly of the victim, and as the pot was slowly heated, the distressed rats would gnaw through anything in their way, usually the intestines, as a way to escape. To make it work, prisoners were completely restrained and tied to the ground or any horizontal surface. A rat was then placed on the stomach, covered by a metallic container, which was gradually heated. The rat began to look for a way out, which inevitably meant through the victim's body. Digging through the body usually took a few hours, resulting in a painful and gruesome death. The Rack The rack is easily one of the most recognizable torture methods from medieval Europe. This is probably the most commonly known torture device from the Middle Ages. The rack was a wooden platform with rollers at both ends. The victim's hands and feet were tied at each end of the rollers, which would then be turned, stretching the victim's body to uncomfortable lengths. Usually this would result into dismemberment. The boot. Sometimes known as the Spanish boot, the boot was something like a rack for your legs. Your lower legs would be placed into a set of tightly fitted wooden or iron boots. From there, wooden wedges are inserted between the boot and the victim's skin, where mallets are used to hammer the wedges into the boot, causing abrasions, lesions, and ultimately the breaking of bones. Some versions would also feature inward pointing spikes, nails, or blades to worsen the effect. The brazen bull. The brazen bull was a hollow brass bull that could fit a person in it. Once they had trapped someone inside, they'd light a fire under the bull, slowly roasting the victim inside. A system of tubes was designed inside the statue so that the victim's screams would be amplified to sound like a raging bull. Legend has it that during the 6th century BC, a brass worker named Perilos of Athens designed the brazen bull. The story goes that the tyrant ruler Phalaris was so appalled by this device that he tricked Perilos into entering the bull to be its first victim. The Knee Splitter Used frequently during the Spanish Inquisition, the knee splitter naturally was used to split the victim's knee. The device was built from two spiked wood blocks with a screw at the back and was clamped on the front and the back of the knee. One turn of the screw and hey presto, a knee was easily and painfully crippled. It was also used on other parts of the body, and there's also been a few other variations of this tool made. Denailing Medieval sources describe the exquisite torture, which begins by securing the prisoner face upward to a tabletop, fixing the hands by chains around the wrists and the bare feet at the ankles. A metal forcep or pliers, often heated red hot, individually grasp each nail in turn and slowly prise it from the nail bed before tearing it free from the digit. A more painful variant used in medieval Spain was performed by introducing a sharp wedge of wood or metal between the flesh of each nail and slowly hammering the wedge under the nail until it was torn free. The Spanish Donkey Similar to the Judas Cradle, the Spanish donkey is a triangular board that a person is forced to straddle, putting their full weight right on the crotch. Weights were then added to their feet until gravity basically splits them right up the middle. Talk about an uncomfortable seat. Swedish Drink also called Schwedendrunk. This was the name given by the German victims of the torture during the Thirty Years' War, which was in between 1618 to 1648. The Swedish drink method involved forcing the victim to drink dangerous amounts of foul manure, urine, and excrements, thus making the stomach bloat up to painful levels. But that wasn't all. If the victims didn't answer the interrogator's questions, they'd stomp on their tummies and run horses over them. Talk about a shitty time. Fling. Filleting, also known as skinning, is a method of torture and often execution, whereby the skin of the victim is gradually and slowly removed from the body in a precise fashion. I don't think I really need to go into any more detail about this one for you to get the picture. The Breast Ripper 
The name should be pretty self-explanatory here. Breast rippers were usually made of iron and they were heated or frozen before they were used. The instrument would be latched onto a breast of the woman and then slowly torn off. If the woman did not die, she would definitely be disfigured for the rest of her life. This punishment was mostly used for women who were accused of adultery or self-abortion. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment with some more suggestions on videos I could cover. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.